Welcome back to the easternslopes.com basement laboratory. I'm David Shedd, uh, senior editor and publisher. And today's topic is refurbishing leather boots. Um, anybody who's owned a really fine quality pair of leather boots, hiking boots, knows that they get damaged, they get abused, but there's nothing that feels as good on your feet. And the older they get, the better they feel. So taking care of them and making them last as long as possible, aside from being financially prudent, because they are expensive, is also just simply a matter of comfort and getting the best out of them. So today I'm taking my uh, L.L. Bean Gore-Tex Cresta uh, boots, which are a personal favorite, and you can see they've taken some abuse. It's been a while since I've worked on them, so it's time to fix them up a little bit and make them look nice, but more importantly, function well again. The first thing you do is take your laces off and look them over. Uh, better to find weaknesses in the laces now and replace the laces now than it is to get into the woods and have a lace snap and then you have to tie it and, and tie it off and work with it. That's a pain in the neck. So check your laces. If there are any places they're significantly frayed, replace them. Um, if the ends have gotten worn, melt them down or it's not, that's a topic of another video, but um, uh, you can actually get little... Uh, at, the, at the hardware store, you can get uh, heat shrink tubing for electrical work and put them over um, um, your laces and melt that and tighten it down so that the ends go in and out the way they're supposed to. So once you've done that, look at the boot. And very often, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this well or not, but you can see that the sole has separated from the leather. Um, and that's caused by a couple different things, um, but typically... Um, the leather, as it gets wet, as you use it, the leather expands, then it contracts, and that constant expansion and contraction causes that separation over time. We'll get into later how to fix that. There are two different ways to do it, depending on the type of boot and, how, and the construction. But the first thing you want to do is get that cleaned out, because there will be all sorts of gunk built up in there. And there are different ways to do it. Um, I use a mini screwdriver, and I really you know, dig down in and get all of the junk out of there. And really just take your time to clean it out. I'm going to do a very short version of this and just go through uh, the basics of it, um, of, of how you take each step, and then you can take more time doing it yourself, obviously, on your own boots. But once you have that fully cleaned out, then you want to clean the entire boot, because if you don't clean it fully, and you put on waterproofing, if you put on repair products, uh, they may or may not work all that well. So the cleaner the boot is, the cleaner the leather is, the better the end result of what you're trying to do. The best cleaning product we found is Granger's G-Max. Uh, it's, it's a gel cleaner um, and it's it's extremely effective at getting everything out of the boot. What I will tell you is it's a minor pain. You, know, you do this, it's got the little squeeze thing. That works okay, but what I find is you actually have to squeeze the uh, the bottle at the same time to get the stuff to come out because it is a gel. It's a not super thick gel. Um, but you take that and you rub it over the boot fully. Then take your boot and rinse it off and let it dry fully. And in the pro it, you know, from my perspective, when I'm drying my boots for working on them, I put them onto a boot dryer. Um, I personally use the DG1 from Dry Guy. Um, because it's a, uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, uh, produces a, a gentle heat and holds the boot upside down. What that does is it makes sure that the boot is fully dried from the inside out, so that it doesn't just look dry on the surface, but if it looks dry on the surface, the heat has come from the inside, and that means your leather is fully dry. When you put a product on there, there's no moisture inside there to cause the product to not adhere correctly. <coughs> Excuse me. Back to not, no coffee today. It's late in the day, so it's peppermint tea. So once you have your boot fully cleaned, the next step is to do the actual repairs. And when you're repairing this, if your boot has what's called a rand, which is a strip of, of rubber that goes around and has been put on that's separate from the sole, you'll want to take it and effectively glue it and tape it on. And there's different types of tape. You can use duct tape, you can use packing tape, whatever. I actually like, um, this is the blue tape that's used for, um, for painting. And it's good because it's 
it sticks it remarkably well, but then it pulls off and it doesn't leave any adhesive behind. Duct tape will leave gunk behind on boots, and that, of course, means you have to clean them again. For the repair, we use free sole, which is a urethane gunk <laughs> that comes from McNett. Um, it adheres incredibly well. It is extremely durable, um, and I haven't found anything that works better. There are other things out there, shoe goo, um, goop, I can't remember all the names, but this is one that's specifically designed for boots and shoes, and um, it, it, it's excellent. And in the case of something like this, where this is part of the sole itself, if you try to use the tape and squeeze it back in, it won't work. Pure and simple. You'll pull it together, and then as soon as you release it, it'll want to snap back out again. If you manage to hold that in and get it to dry, you still, as you have that expansion and contraction, you're going to have that separate again at times. And I don't even try and fool around with that. What I do is I take, and uh, by the way, I should have said, once I've cleaned the boot fully, before I get to the point of actually putting this on, I take alcohol and pour it into a little thing and Q-tips, and I work my way around and through so that I'm getting the inside of the rubber and the outside of the boot entirely clean. And once I've worked around any places they're separated and given that a chance to dry, um, I start working with this. Take the, I take the free sole and spread it on and then use toothpicks and just work with the toothpicks, work it down into that crack, if I've got, if I've got a crack like that, until you've got that basically filled. And then run a bead around and use a plain old popsicle stick. It's my personal favorite spreader. You can buy these and you can buy them at craft shops or whatever. Um, personal preference, go buy some popsicles or fudgesicles. That's my own favorite. And that gives you an excuse. Geez, I need some fudgesicles so I can get popsicle sticks. Um, either wash them off or use the end that obviously didn't have the fudgesicle on it. But then just take that and smooth the free sole around. And that'll give you a nice finish. And then you let that fully dry. Once you've let it fully dry, also by Granger's, and I think you can buy these as a set, um, Granger's Paste Wax for smooth leather uh, is far and away the best product I've ever found for working with, uh, with good leather boots. Um, it's a fairly thick paste, but it melts at room temperature, just above room temperature. So if you put it on your fingers, and, you, and I, use, I do, you can use cloth, you can use whatever. I put it on with my fingers because it allows me to really work it into the small areas around here. Um, it'll melt from just your finger pressure and temperature so that it really soaks into the leather well. And um, over time I found that not only does it soak into leather well um, and produce a nice finish, but also when I'm out there using it and it's all worn off and the boot is starting to look ugly again, um, it still is providing waterproofness. This pair of boots, even though um, they look terrible and really are due to be fixed up again, um, I had them out the other day for about nine hours in wet conditions, wet leaves, you name it, and they were constantly soaked. In fact, overnight in the tent, they didn't even dry out. The lower part of the boot stayed wet. Uh, my foot was never wet inside. And also, I never had that clammy feeling, even though they're a Gore-Tex boot, if you seal the boot with the wrong type of material, um, you will end up with getting a, um, getting a, um, it won't breathe correctly and you'll, and, and you'll, the Gore-Tex effectively won't work for letting you keep your feet dry over the day. Um, so the Granger's stays effective for a long time. End result is, if you follow those steps, this is the twin to that boot, which I already did in advance, and you can see I filled around here so that there's no gaps there whatsoever, there's no place for water to get in, and then put the waterproofing on. The book, boot looks almost new, um, which is nice. I mean, we certainly have pride in our, in our, in our, in our uh, gear, and uh, so it's nice to have that look like that. But more importantly, that boot now is going to, that sole is going to stay on longer, um, it's going to protect itself. The leather is protected both around here from abrasion, uh, that little extra, when I put it on, I smear it a little bit higher, and it protects 
up into here from bumping into rocks and things like that. And of course, keeping water out of it, the leather is less likely to crack and be damaged. So that's the basics of um, of repairing a pair of boots. And if you do that once in a while with yours, you'll have a uh, you'll have a pair of boots that last a lot longer, and you can get the maximum enjoyment out of them. Any questions? You know how to get in touch with us.